Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage. We're on Mad Max 2, or Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, or just The Road Warrior. A lot of people just thought this was Mad Max 1. The Road? The I watched road. The Road. Oh, yeah. What do you We're think? watching that movie about the two... Yeah, the, the father and son, and they're just pushing a shopping cart. Through yeah, and they got the to avoid like cannibals and whatever. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really sad and grim, and the dad dies at the end. That one. Yeah, that's the one. That's what I watched. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be one of those ones where, like, in in high school, they asked you to do an essay on like Hamlet, but you didn't you didn't read Hamlet, you read <laughs> Macbeth. So you're like, well, actually, uh, Hamlet's dilemma is very similar to Macbeth. Uh, <laughs> and if I could speak to that. <laughs> For 900 words. No, just kidding. I watch Mad Max too. Are people kidding about leaving a like? Is that something you think? No. No, it's real. It's real. That's it's not real. a joke. It's real. That's real. real. You have to it's do it. It's real stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, man. This movie, it's rad as hell. I yeah, really right? Like it. Yeah. This is the blueprint, really, for Fury Road. Yes. You know, the, the first one was the prototype. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got some good stuff in it. Yeah. And it's got some real down-to-earth Australian stuff. Boy, does as, it. As I think we mentioned, the first one is a combination between, like, a real movie but also the uh, soap opera, A Country Practice. <laughs> but this one, the stakes have been upped, and this is it. It's got it's got the big chases. It's uh -huh. got the big action. It's got the... It's got big men. It's got big men. It's got big, colourful characters who are big men. Yeah. You recognise a lot of, the, like, the jalopy cars that, again, kind yeah, of carry yeah, yeah. over into other movies, mm -hmm. specifically Fury Road. It's funny because after the first one, George Miller was like, that was bad, I had a bad time. <laughs> it took me forever to get that thing working. Oh, you tell me this now. <laughs> I said nice things about it last week. No, no, no. no well, he, if he thinks it's bad, I think it's bad too. He wasn't saying the movie was bad. He was saying the experience and like, and he was like, but I, what is he saying? <laughs> he's saying it was hard oh, to okay, get that right. movie made. Right, okay. And he said it was well, just, it was hard to watch George. No, it wasn't. No, it was fun. And he said it was just problem after problem and maybe he's not cut out for filmmaking. And Australian filmmaker Peter Weir oh. was like, yeah, man, that's filmmaking. You did it right. That's okay. It's yeah, just problem right. solving. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. All right, I can make another movie then. Right then. And he said a lot of the stuff that went into this was a result of editing the original Mad Max and going through just being like, hate that, hate that. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Hate that. Mel Gibson, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. He'll do it. He'll go again. Because he cut the first movie in the kitchen while Byron Kennedy did the sound in the next room. Ah. And so he just looked at that movie for nine months straight and was just like, oh my God. But that was kind of like a film school. By the time he got to this, yeah. well, he was offered uh, Rambo First Blood. Ah. Ah. Which I think is just called First Blood. What's it called? I can't, I can't remember. They keep changing them on the box sets. It's all called, of which I own. It's called Rambo the Road Warrior. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he turned that down and went, no, I want to go into this. Okay. I think you should adopt our method, which is just leaving the editing to somebody more talented than him. Yeah. Don't that, even worry about it's it. It's fine. You know? And every now and then the editors, they'll pop in just to let you know that they're working hard. <laughs> Well, hardly working, am I right? <laughs> and you know what's something that George Miller accidentally tapped into, which they lean into on this, is the myth mm. of this lone warrior. A yeah. road warrior, if you will. You, you kind of build towards this character in the first one, and he realised that he'd tapped into this hero's journey kind of archetype. Mm. And this is the central focus now of these movies. I'm you know? glad that he went with kind of like a mythological kind of folk hero, which is kind of an Australian... And it's purely Australian. Nobody yeah. else has that. That's exactly right. And I'm glad he went with that as opposed to like another Australian kind of idea like the larrikin. <laughs> like maybe, what if Mad Max was just going through multiple movies just being like funny in a mean way to everybody? <laughs> and then going, nah, you're all nah, right. Nah, I'm just kidding. Nah, just kidding. I fucking hate you. Nah, you're all nah, right. Nah, just kidding. Buy me a beer though. I'm a larrikin. <laughs> I'll beat you up. Nah, just kidding. I'm nah. a drunk. Not kidding. I am. I'm a big drunk. Yeah, no, you're right. It's good that they leaned into this aspect of it. So Mel Gibson in the first one at time of filming, he was 21 years old. He was a real young fella. Mm. This one's pretty much set in real time afterwards, like three to five years. And apparently when George Miller caught up with him again, he's like, oh, look at how this guy's matured. Look at him. He's all he's all weathered and looking rough and all of that. I think that's just punch and darts because yeah. Mel Gibson was like a very heavy smoker. I don't know what he's up to now. We don't need to look into any of that, no. do we? <laughs> Clean fine. living and keeping below the radar, you Exactly, know? yeah. But it was also Mel Gibson's idea to make Max look like as rough and ragged as possible. You know, he's got some grey in his temples. Apparently he cut his own hair before this. You oh, know, you take can tell. Well, boy, can you? <laughs> Everybody in this movie has very 2024 Australian male hair. Have you yes, noticed? Yes, they do. Absolutely. Mustaches and mullets and just... 
crew cuts on one side. Yeah, cutting their own hair but missing the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah if, you wanna, if you want the Mad Max 2 Road Warrior experience, just go to an Australian music festival. You'll <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, cutting the sleeve off the outfit, all of that, that was Mel Gibson. He's like, I want to be looking rough and real. Mm. And boy, does he. I saw an interview with Mel Gibson about this movie. It's something I didn't notice, but it works so well. Is that in all the action sequences for this, he looks terrified. Uh -huh. And I think it really helps sell it. As opposed to like a Fast and Furious where it's just like, whatever. Right, Whereas uh -huh, here yeah. it's like, this guy looks like he thinks he's going to die. And he might. <laughs> and he might, yeah. Again, like the first one, astounding nobody died in this. Oh, well, there's been some severe injuries and we can get to those. I maintain my position. <laughs> It's amazing nobody died. Yeah, no, you are correct. Uh, including the dog, who was named Dog in real life. It was found in a local pound and it was going to be euthanized like oh. the next day. He ended up being euthanized after the film. <laughs> no, that's not true. One of the camera <laughs> operators took him. He lives in the Hollywood Hills now. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah. He's done some very shady stuff. Don't look into it. <laughs> Don't look into it. <laughs> Don't Google dog. <laughs> Don't do it. But I love that dog in this, though. It's got a little neckerchief. Sure. At one point, it's holding Bruce Spence hostage. <laughs> Absolutely. Which is great. Wouldn't we all want to do that? Oh, know? my God. How long was Bruce Spence lying in the dirt waiting for That's Mad a great Max? question. So he's, uh, you know, uh, New, Ze New, New Zealand-born uh, Australian actor Bruce Spence has been in 100... He's like, in Revenge of the Sith. He's in Revenge of the Sith. He's, he's one in, of those guys with in, the teeth. He's in Matrix. He's got the face and the teeth. He's, he's in, in the Matrix. He's in second or third Matrix. He's got to be in like 100 movies easily. But, yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, he's in third Mad Max, but he's playing a different... He is playing a different guy. Helicopter flying yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, uh, yeah local legend. Um, but yeah, he plays the gyro captain and his his plan is to lie in wait under the sand yep. with his gyrocopter as as a as a prize for any roving bandits with a with a obviously venomous snake wrapped around it. Mm-hmm. How long's he wait? Months? I guess so. That snake's just staying? Yeah. Snakes love gyros. I would poke the snake with a stick. You could just get the stick. I was gonna say like, you'd poke it with a stick. Maybe you're not find any sticks, yeah, yeah. you know? In the outback, in, in the Australian outback, outback. Yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah. In the future. Oh, yeah, by the way, in between one and two, things went downhill just before the first Mad Max started, but there was a nuclear war yeah. in between these movies, and that explains why it's a little bit more barren. Everybody's a little bit more cutting the bum out of your pants. <laughs> Absolutely. Things have got a little bit yeah, out of yeah. hand. That got caught in the blast, the bum <laughs> of the man's pants. That's where Mel Gibson's sleeve went. He got caught in the blast. He was running from the blast, and... Whoosh, God damn, at least it wasn't my bum. That's right. That would be embarrassing. Let's talk about that gang though, right? Uh huh. They're a fun gang. Mm. I know they're bad dudes. Yeah. And I like those two best friends on a bike. Just two, good friends, two aren't mates they? hanging out. I love how they're good friends. So the costume, Probably roommates too. Probably, well, actually there is backstory to these guys. First of all, costume designer Norma Morisot designed all of this. I think it works perfectly. Again, you can see most of this at an Australian music festival. It all holds up. Also, that dog boy... Killed that blonde dude. Uh -huh. Just a boomerang to the head. <laughs> That's right. Just... <laughs> I, did, I don't think that was... I know there were a, like a roving gang of marauders, yeah. but that seems completely unnecessary. Like that guy of all the guys, you know? Mm, yeah, you know. Oh, good as any, I guess. When you've got a, a big steel boomerang, everything looks like something you can hit with a big steel Somebody's boomerang. Forehead. You know that old Australian adage? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Where'd he get the boomerang also? He made it. People are like, oh, Australia boomerangs. Nobody's got one of those. He's got one. He's still got it in real life as well, that actor. He's now a jeweler. Oh. Huh. Yeah, that's right. There's also a rumour probably heard this there's a fan theory mm -hmm. that the tom hardy incarnation of mad max mm -hmm. is actually the dog boy well That's he's right. called like feral kid or whatever mm -hmm. but if you look at any of the fury road prequel comics that is not the case this is mm. technically the same mad max or they're all set in different dimensions they don't line up <laughs> that speaks let's to not let's not add a multiverse to this no please. it's just the mythology that's yeah, the idea uh -huh. behind it these are stories people are telling about mm. this guy about right. this lunatic running yeah. about and in the real universe where they're telling these stories everything's fine the mel gibson universe yeah that's the right real world everything's fine <laughs> yeah. it's fine don't worry about it so apparently the actor who played the blonde guy who gets the boomerang to the head uh -huh. is his name i didn't write it down <laughs> They were looking for some... Very disrespectful. <laughs> I'm sorry. To blonde guy. I know. Whose name I don't have here that I didn't write down. <laughs> Apparently, George Miller was looking for somebody with this exact specifications, right? Okay. And he was a courier who went past their office in Balmain in Sydney. Uh -huh. And George Miller was like, grab that guy. <laughs> sure. That's the guy. Grab that guy, rip the bum out of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And then <laughs> tell him about his role on the way. Let's go. Let's get a broken hill. And apparently, according to Vernon Wells, who plays the Mohawk guy, he, you would have seen in other things. He's Bennett in Commando. He is, exactly. Let off some steam, Bennett, yeah. etc. Uh -huh. Because they all made up their backstories. 
He said that they're not actually lovers, as oh, implied. Sure, okay. right. So he said apparently there was a deleted scene where it's explained that Wes rescued Golden Boy, uh-huh, which sure. is his name, uh, not in real life. This is his real name, and became a surrogate father to him. Apparently, though, there's no evidence of this aside from this statement. Okay. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem that like that's the relationship. Mm, there's a there's a, a dele- father son dynamic. There's a deleted scene where they're both in separate houses, like kissing their girlfriends goodbye <laughs> as they go to work on the biker gang on their single bike. That's right. Oh, also this is fun. Mel Gibson called Vernon Wells barometer bum because of the outfit he was wearing, because his butt cheeks would turn purple when it got really cold. They, so that meant that everybody had to be warmed up at that point. That That's works for me. Works for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cold during the filming of this. You can't really tell because it looks like barren and hot and deserty but yeah, no yeah. it was and they only used the sh- they only used the shot where he had a flushed pink bum <laughs> to indicate warmth so you know based on that barometer you would assume it was nice and warm checking their makeup in his bum yes you'd have to wouldn't you i think so yeah. you want it to match you want some continuity some right. bum continuity absolutely yeah anyways humongous you know the story about this right no. Here we go. I don't know what the story Guff is going to be. You didn't, Here we go. Any, you didn't even give me one clue. Okay. You don't know what the story of this guy? Who is he really? What's the theory? What was the original idea? Oh, don't know. It was the goose. It was Mad Goose. What? That was the idea initially. Mm-hmm. But he got blown up or something. Yeah, he got blown up or something. He got burnt, etc. So it was supposed to be Goose, but that was nixed pretty early on. Also, he looks completely different. But there are a few hints that kind of carry over because he's got horrible burns. The Raiders also use a bunch of police vehicles, which implies that they were cops or That's got right. them from cops. They were probably cops. <laughs> They were probably cops, Mason. <laughs> uh, and his sidearm is very similar to... Oh, that's true, yeah. Um, ...the MFP's sidearm. Okay. But again, these are things that could be stolen. Or they were cops. Or most of them were cops, Mason. Maybe they I'm just saying. had access to that, uh, that armoury and the, <laughs> that's right. the motor pool, etc. But what we do know of his backstory is... Because George Miller often leaves a lot of this stuff blank. Mm. Humongous was some kind of military man who'd been in a severe accident. You do see some hints towards him. You see his parents at one point in a photo... So oh, yeah, that's right. Like, it's in his gun case. Yeah, yeah, he might have some, like, German ancestry I thought that or something. maybe it was his, his wife. We don't know. The stunts in this, though, it's bigger than ever. Mm-hmm. There's buggy flips. At one point, there's one gets dragged by the truck. Mm-hmm. That's all good stuff. I'm loving all of that. Oh, what's the story this time around? Do people like that? Are people like... <laughs> Look, I haven't, watched the, this. This? I haven't watched the movie. Well, let me think. <laughs> uh, Mad Max is having a nice time yep. in the Australian Outback. Yep. And uh, and uh, don't you worry. He's got lots of bullets as well. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he's got, to, he's got more than he needs. <laughs> he's giving away at tips at local cafes and stuff. <laughs> oh, thanks for the flat white. Here's a bullet. <laughs> uh, but then. He, uh, he needs some fuel. Yep. Don't we all? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll get I my... mean, with the, the bloody prices we've got these That's days. Right. And then? He runs afoul of some marauders. He does run afoul of some marauders. Mm-hmm. And, but then he learns that there's an oasis encampment and they've got all the fuel he could possibly need. So he's going to go there and he's going he's gonna to bargain for fuel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And they're like, why don't you work for us? And he's like, oh, all right. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I'm a bit of a workaholic. You got me. And a drunk. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So at the end, Mad Max has to take, uh, sorry, Mad Thew Max has to take the tanker mm-hmm. and like protect the fuel mm-hmm. while they all come in after him so everybody else can escape. Mm-hmm. Twist though, turns out that they swap the fuel out. That's right. Apparently there is some contention about whether or not he knew that there was no fuel in that, but I think it's pretty obvious that yeah. he didn't know, right? Yeah. And they screwed him. He said, I thought this was fuel and I thought that was goose. <laughs> <laughs> all my assumptions were incorrect. And I think that's important. Do you question your assumptions? Absolutely. This was made around the era where like uh, every every movie and every cartoon had a moral at the end and a nice lesson for kids. It's like, hey, listen, we've all had fun. <laughs> we've all flipped a tanker in the desert. That's right. But what have we learned? Yeah. Don't do that, baby. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> anyway, the tanker roll chase at the end, it was deemed so dangerous that the driver, Dennis Miller, uh, he wasn't Wait, allowed- Dennis Miller, famous political comedian? No, Dennis he Miller? was- Oh, sorry. His name is Dennis Williams. I, I want to talk about this guy. He was just a truck driver. And they're uh-huh. like, can you flip this? Let's get this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. We'll put you in a truck. We'll flip it. We're going to cut the bum out of your pants. But uh, he was told not to eat any food for 12 hours before in case he needed to go to surgery. <laughs> You know, because of the truck flip. Sure. Huh. Apparently it rolled travelling 104 kilometres per hour or 65 miles per hour. And I found a story on Reddit concerning a Facebook post from his daughter, Kelly Miller. And apparently, again, he wasn't a stunt driver and he also wasn't paid for this. Oh, he was given the Mac Bulldog from the bonnet, which he still has. Okay. And then he went to them for payment and they were like, 
oh, we don't actually have any money for that thing. That but you, you got did. the Mac Bulldog thing on the front of the truck, so you can have that. <laughs> yeah. And also, aren't you doing this for the exposure? Well, that's pretty much... in 40 years, some people will talk about it on YouTube. <laughs> you probably get some work from that. Yeah. Probably get some work from that. Well, yeah, he worked on three. So he, he was, he was you know, happy to do it. But maybe someone even now at Water Brothers could pay this man. Maybe. Don't you think? I think so too. Because he flipped this truck, this yeah. thing that people remember. Or they could delete Mad Max 2 <laughs> yeah. in its entirety off the internet. I'll be happy with that. They could do that. They could do it. Yeah, yeah. But there was a severe injury in this. You would have definitely seen the moment because they put it in film. The moment where the guy clips the bike and yeah. pinwheels. Mm -hmm. That was Guy Norris. Clearly something had gone wrong when he hit that. He wasn't supposed to hit it at that speed and, and, and any of that. And so that when they took him into the hospital to see what was wrong, he didn't actually break any bones, but he had a pin in his leg from a previous operation, from a hip operation, uh -huh. and that was bent severely. Ooh. So that's what went wrong. For him. Yeah, well. So he didn't technically break any bones, which is good. Because he already had mm. a giant metal rod in his leg, which is lucky. Which is why we don't have to pay you. That's, <laughs> that's how the meeting went afterwards. <laughs> I tell you what, though. Do you think it's weird the ending of this is just humongous just kills himself? I feel like he didn't have to do that, right? Yeah, maybe. Is he just like, whatever. I had a good run. I guess, I mean, doesn't that, doesn't that speak to the... Um the nihilistic nature. Yes, exactly. Wow. Plus, you also get the rare double bad guy kill. That's true. Which we talked about recently in, in Zorro. Yeah, but, yeah, Zorro's uh, good but, for but that. Boy, that, it's always satisfying when you see that. It's a good Maybe one. he was like, this will be great for anybody watching, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or anybody telling a story about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any kind of dog boy who happens to be yeah, watching. Yeah. Maybe somebody's watching this on some sort of old-timey steampunk telescope. <laughs> From over on that ridge, they'll they're gonna see Imagine this. Imagine bloody, looking at that. They are gonna bloody dine out on this at the pub oh later. Oh my god! In real time, you yeah. watch this unfold. First of all, you'd be like, "What is this? What's <laughs> happening here?" And uh -huh. then you see that. Yeah. My goodness. Again, we're assuming this all takes place in a in a. Everything's normal. Everything's normal. <laughs> but there's just a patch of desert. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you take a wrong turn from like. Chadston Shopping Centre, <laughs> and you drive out in the, into the wilderness, and all of a sudden there's a there's a there's just a, a destruction derby yeah. of lunatics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, wow, wow. We're gonna go back to muffin break. <laughs> Anyways, you know what it's time for? What's it time for? It's the road trivia. I love that. This is the trivia section of the show. And here we go. Mel Gibson only had 16 lines of dialogue for this entire film, and two of them is that I only came for the gasoline. Like he could have mixed it up. Oh yeah. He could have said, I'm I'm here to eat a chiquito. And, and have some gasoline, and I've finished my Chokito. You already finished it? That's a local it is candy a local bar reference. reference. I don't know if they still make those. They shouldn't. And they're not no. very good, are they? Yeah, What's no. in them? What are they doing? Is it a biscuit? James, don't, what if they're still around? Like, we could get a Chokito sponsorship. <laughs> I guess we could. <laughs> they're great, oh, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, they're great. Now, obviously, this has influenced a lot of movies, this kind of aesthetic. You might have even seen it in the movie The Road, which you watched That's instead right. of this. This includes the Japanese manga and anime series Fist of the North Star. That makes a lot of sense. Got a lot going on. And I've seen and read all of that. So without getting into any of the specifics, that is true. Because once you get started, you'll never stop Mate, talking about can you even imagine? Uh, can you boy. imagine if we did an episode on that, how detailed it would be? Incredible. Well, I don't think we even cared. Yeah. Got too much knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be talking about anime and manga that parallels that. Sure. It'd, it'd be a four hour long video, part one. Absolutely. Of seven. Yeah. We can't do it. I'm don't, sorry. Don't, don't, don't even get started. Yeah. Uh, George Miller recalls meeting Joe Dante years later and having the Gremlins director tell him that he could tell The Road Warrior was a low-budget film because of how frequently it moves between sunrise, sunset, and everything in between, all during the same scene. And George Miller said, Yeah, you certainly can't wait for your lights. You just have to keep shooting. So yeah, I didn't notice that at all. No, you neither know. did I. Yeah, I, I got caught up in all the other details that I noticed about this movie, all yeah, the yeah. filmmaking stuff. And, he, and Miller would be like, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Joe Dante, over making Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> Massive success. I couldn't hear you over that. <laughs> no. And also Happy Feet or whatever else I did. Yeah, whatever else. Babe? He directed Babe 2, but he was heavily yeah. involved in Babe 1. Yeah, that's good. Babe yeah. 2, The Road Warrior. That's right. Uh, Miller said also it only took one year from the point where he began writing the screenplay to its theatrical release, which is pretty incredible. You know, when you got a good thing going, it just goes and it's fine. Yeah. You don't even have to really put that much work into it. Just kind of, you know, it's like a snowball effect. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand it off to the editors. It's fine. That's right. And the ending where Max ends up all dusty, George Miller thought that's exactly how he should have started the film. And that's what they did in Fury Road. Because he's very dusty in Fury oh, Road. so dusty. <laughs> yeah. If he were an Australian country musician, he'd be slim dusty. He would be. 
And if he was a politician, he'd be Paul Keating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A, a notoriously non-dusty man. That's right. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything, by no, the way. No, not at all. <laughs> just so We're people. just trying to shoehorn in references here. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have? <laughs> If he were a chocolate bar, he'd be a Chiquito. He would be, absolutely. As we've established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? If he was a Saturday morning kids TV show, he would be Agro's Cartoon Connection. <laughs> there we go, perfect. <laughs> All right. He's quite aggro, isn't he? <laughs> he really is. He could be called Agro Max. Mm. Actually, he's not that bad in this one either, is he? No. Yeah. Is he insane? I think by- Or is the fact that he's so calm indicate that he is insane? Maybe that's it. Yeah. I think four he definitely is. They lean into that. Mm, we'll yeah. get to it. Anyways, the box office for this. This was the most expensive Australian film ever produced at the time with a budget of $4.5 million, and the return internationally was $36 million, significantly less than the first one. Mm, but again, this is the one that I think played on TV. This is the one that did really well on, on home rentals and et cetera. So th this is the one that when you think original Mad Max movies, it's, yep. it's this one. Again, most people wouldn't have seen the first one. They've just seen this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and probably Thunderdome. So everybody was in it for the exposure, and that's great, I that's think. That's right. And listen, we're in it for the exposure, but we're also in it for money. Because <laughs> if you head over to bigsandwich.co, which is like our private Patreon service, you sign up, there's early videos. These videos go up there early, don't they? That's right. There's also bonus podcasts. We do movie commentaries. We do video game Let's Plays. Mm. Oh, my God, there's so many of those, and they're all great. Also, our podcast called The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that comes out there Sunday as opposed to Monday, if you do want to check it out. We're just having a good time. That's right. Or just, you know, we have a podcast and stay here or whatever. If he were a potato chip, mm -hmm. he'd be a Red Rock Deli. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one. <laughs> good reference, right? What would you, what chip would you do from the Red Rock Deli? Probably honey soy chicken. I'd do a salt and vinegar. I like their salt and vinegar. Mostly. He'd be a salt and vinegar, I think. Oh, he would be. Because that's he? authentically Australian, isn't it? Correct. Only Australia has those. That's true. <laughs> He'd be a four and twenty pie, James. I don't like from a service station. I don't like the pie. I don't like meat. He pies. doesn't care. No, he doesn't. That's right. I'd, I'd doesn't do care a, what you like. I do a pasta or a sausage roll wow. over a pie any day of the week. Wow. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Grab that, Jamie. Guys, we'll see you next week. Mad Max. <laughs> Mad Max. Mad Max.